in Cameroon descend from the lost sheep of the house of Israel. What do I mean by that? I mean that you are indeed the real biblical Israelites. You've never heard that before. I know it's shocking to many of you. Having followed white supremacy Christianity for your lives, I'm here to tell you, Christianity as you know it today is a lie. I'm going to say it again. Christianity as you know it today is a lie. Remember this. Under Christianity, our people were both enslaved and colonialized. Let me say it again. Under modern day Christianity, our people were both enslaved and colonialized. So, if your colonializer never treated you right, what makes you think they're going to teach you right? They've done nothing from the beginning but teach you lies. Let me say it again. They've done nothing today but teach you lies. Okay? Now, watch this. Isaiah, let's open up with the book of Psalms. Let's go to the book of Psalms. Chapter 55 and verse 20. He has put forth his hands against such as be at peace with him. He has broken his covenant. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. What is this scripture talking about? This scripture is talking about a colonializer, an invader who would come to a peaceable people and teach them lies and colonialize them and enslave many of their inhabitants. Remember, the slave trade took place throughout West Africa, Central Africa, and even parts of South Africa. The slaves were taken from there. Those that remained behind were colonialized. Let's read it again. Psalms chapter 55, verse 20 and 21. He has put forth his hands against such as be at peace with him. He has broken his covenant. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter. But war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil. Yet were they drawn swords. What does it mean when it says his words were smoother than butter? The white man came with Christianity and taught us that Jesus Christ and God were white people and the Israelites were white and that God loves us all, everyone. Then what did he do? He enslaved us and colonialized us. Let me say it again. He enslaved us and colonialized us, taking our natural resources taking and reaping the benefits of our lands this is what he did now now having made that profound statement many of you are sitting at home right now shocked as to what i just said shocked what i'm going to do is take you all on a journey through the bible i'm going to show you that god is black christ is black the angels are black and the Israelites, that's right, the Israelites are black, which many of you brothers and sisters in Cameroon are descended from. This gospel is shocking. You've never heard this before. What is he saying? What is Bishop Nathaniel saying? For all my life, I thought God was the white man. I thought Jesus was the white man. I thought the angels was the white man. I thought the Israelites was the white man. But I'm telling you today, you have learned nothing but lies all your lives. Let's start with the first man, Adam. I'm going to Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. If you have a King James Bible, get your King James Bible out and read along with me. I want you to read the King James Bible 
because it gives you crystal clear color description. All the latest translations of the Bible, what did the white man do recently? They took out all references to color. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. Watch this. Genesis 2 verse 7. And the Lord God for man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. This was the creation of the first man, Adam. How was man created? From the dust of the ground. What color is the dust of the ground? Is it white? No. It's different shades of brown from a very dark brown to a light brown. So I want you all to listen good. Write it down. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7 proves the first man, Adam, was a black man. Now, let's get some more. Let's get some more. Let's go to the Song of Solomon. No, let's go to Job first. The prophet. Chapter 30, verse 30. It says, my skin is black upon me. And my bones are burned with heat. Let's read it again. Job chapter 30, verse 30. My skin is black upon me. What color is... Job was a black man. What was Job? Of the holy and righteous seed of God. He was a black man, not a white man. Why does it say my skin? For the Christian hypocrites listening. Why does he say my skin is black? Because his skin was different shades of brown. Dark brown to a light brown. Watch this. Let's get some more. Let's go to the Song of Solomon. Chapter 1. I know you never heard this before, but it's all right. You're going to be okay. Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 1. The Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. Verse 5. I am black, but comely, O ye daughters of Jerusalem. What did Solomon say? King Solomon, king of Israel, said, I am black. You mean you've never read that in church? You've never read that in Sunday school? No, you haven't, because your preachers have been teaching you white supremacist lies. Every Sunday after Sunday, you've been learning lies. So what have we learned so far? Adam was a black man. Job was a black man. King Solomon was a black man. Let's read some more. Let's go to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 8, and verse 21. Jeremiah 8, verse 21. For the hurt of the daughter of my people am I hurt. I am black. What did Jeremiah say? I am black. You've never read that in your life. You sit back and watch these Christian programs of white people portraying themselves as Adam, portraying themselves as Job, portraying themselves as King Solomon, portraying themselves as Jeremiah. And they've all been lies. Lie, lie, lie. Let's get some more. Lamentations. Lamentations chapter 4 and verse 8 reads, Their visage is blacker than a coal. They are not known in the streets. Their skin cleaveth to their bones. It is withered. It has become like a stick. So what was Jeremiah prophesying about? That the Israelites, a black people, would catch so much turmoil, so much tribulation, they would not be recognizable in the streets where they live. Like in Cameroon, this age is blacker than a coal, meaning their faces are blacker than a coal. Watch this. Let's talk about the angels for a second. Ezekiel chapter 1 and verse 13. As for the their appearance was like burning coals of fire. Let's read that again about the angels. 
Ezekiel chapter 1 and verse 13. As for the likeness of the living creatures, the living creatures of the angels. Let's read it again. As for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire. What color is a coal? Black. Black, 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 black. You've never read that in church. Your preachers never taught you that in church. You've been living Christian lives all your life. You've been living the lives of white society all your lives. This is why you've, you've been colonialized. This is why, you, why Europeans dominate the world. Because of their Christian lies. The Bible says the angels are blacker than a coal. Get a white boy out of that. Get a white man out of that. Let's get some more. Let's read some more. Let's read about Jesus Christ. Go to the book of Revelation. Go to the book of Revelation, chapter 1. We're going to the book of Revelation, chapter 1. Bear with me. Revelation, chapter 1, and verse 1. Revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. What does the word revelation mean? It means the revealing. The revealing of who? The revealing of Jesus Christ. Jump down to verse 14 of the same chapter. Let's read it again. His head and his hairs were white like wool. As white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. What does it mean when it says his eyes were as a flame of fire? Genesis 49 and verse 12, Moses prophesied about Messiah. He said, his eyes shall be red with wine. Let's read it again. His eyes shall be red with wine. So when it says his eyes were like lamps of fire, it's referring to the whites of his eyes being like red, like he drank wine. Okay, why? Because Jesus Christ drank wine. Remember his first miracle was turning water into wine. Don't forget that. Let's read on. Verse 15. And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. Now, I don't know about you. Everybody's feet is the same color as their arms and their feet. The Bible says his feet were like unto fine brass. Brass is brown. As if they burned in a furnace. Meaning he was very dark. Hell. If you burn anything in a furnace, if you burn white rice in the furnace, it gets black. So Jesus Christ was so dark, he looked like he was burned in a furnace. What color is Jesus Christ? A black man. A black man. A black man. You've never heard that before. Why? Because your Christian churches have been doing nothing but teaching you about it. Your Christian churches have been teaching you lies. Five one eight three. Let's read verse seven. Again. Official finish for our banquet today at the race. And his feet of like unto fine brass, as the if they burned in a furnace. Fourteen runners. So Jesus Christ was so race. dark, he looked like he was burned in a furnace. What does that describe to you? A black man. Show me the scripture where it says Jesus was white. I want the scripture. I want the scripture that says Jesus was white. You can't get it. You can't find it. It's not the Bible. Let's get some more. Daniel. Chapter 10. Daniel chapter 10, verse 5 and 6. It reads, Then I lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of ephah, his body also was like the barrel. The word barrel means green, meaning Christ had on a green garment in his vision. And his face as the appearance of light, meaning he had a glow on his face, power emanating from his face. And his eyes as lamps of fire. Why? Because Genesis 49 verse 12 prophesied that Messiah's eyes would be red with wine. Now let's read on to his color. 
and his arms and his arms and his feet like in color to polish brass. What does polished brass signify? Brass burn in the furnace. So even here in Daniel 10, 5 and 6, it describes Jesus Christ being so dark, the color of his arms and feet was like he what? Burned in a furnace. That's what polished brass means, burned in a furnace. I hope you all can understand what I'm saying and what I'm reading to you. Okay. Let's get some more. Let's go to the book of Acts. Chapter 13. Acts chapter 13 and verse 1. As they were in the church that was at Antioch, certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon that was called Niger. What does the word Niger come from? It comes from the Niger River, which extends throughout Africa. Okay? What does it mean? It's a Latin word that means black. Black. A black river. So let's read it again. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon that was called Niger. What is it telling you that certain prophets were called black? Why? Because they came from the area of Niger. It came from the area of the Niger River. Your ministers never expounded on that, never explained it to you. But these ministers are busy taking your money. Let's get some more. Let's go to Zephaniah. Zephaniah chapter 3, and verse 10. It says, From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my supply, even the daughter of my disperse, shall bring mine offering. So who's the daughter of God's dispersed? The Israelites. Where are they located? Beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. What does it mean beyond the rivers of Ethiopia? The rivers of Ethiopia connect with the Nile water system in the heart of Ethiopia. The Adbara River extends from the highlands of modern Ethiopia to the Nile River. The Blue Nile extends from the direction of Addis Ababa in a northwestern direction toward the Nile. Then you have those near Uganda, and the northern Congo is the Barel Gazal River. It's approximately 500 miles long in the southwest, in southwest Sudan. Okay, formed by the confluence confluence of the Bar El Arab and the Jur rivers in northwest Upper Nile. It flows east to unite at Late No with the Bar El Jebel and form the night, the White Nile. These areas are beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. So where are we reading? Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 10, about the remnant of Israel. It says, from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my suppliants, even the daughter of my disperse, shall bring mine office, offerings. So God is telling you and me, that there is a remnant of the Israelites saying, wake up, people. Wake up. Wake up. I'm sharing the gospel with you. I'm sharing the good news with you. You've been learning lies all your lives. I challenge your preachers. Prove to me the Israelites are white in the Bible. Prove to me Jesus is a white man in the Bible. Prove to me the angels are white in the Bible. I challenge your Christian pastors. I challenge your reverends your popes, your imams, I challenge you right now. You can't prove nothing in the Bible. Job was white. Solomon was white. The angels are white. The Israelites are white. You can't prove nothing. What am I revealing to you? The good news, the gospel. This should invigorate your soul. This should enliven you. This should make you stand up and dance. This proof for our peoples, the enslaved, the colonialized, the down and out, this should make you rejoice. But some of you, I believe, might be angry. You've come to love your colonializers so much. 
I just love the way the white man has destroyed our people. I just love it. So you will suffer and die with your white slave master. You will suffer and perish with your white Christian colonializers. Understand what I'm saying. I also read Acts 13 and 1, where it said there were certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon that was called Niger. Where does the word Niger come from? The Niger River. You've never read that. You've never understood that. The truth of all times. We are not Africans. We are the Israelites who fled into Africa. You forgot. From beyond, from beyond, from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my suppliance, even the daughter of my dispersed, shall bring my offer. Okay? Who is it talking about? Verse 13. The remnant of Israel shall not do iniquity. So who's the daughter of God's dispersed? The remnant of Israel. Verse 13 clears it up in case you were confused. The remnant of Israel is scattered beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. The remnant of Israel is scattered beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. But where are the what are the rivers of Ethiopia and where do they extend? I'm going to explain it again. The rivers of Ethiopia connect with the Nile water system, which is in the heart of Ethiopia. The Atbara River extends from the highlands of modern Ethiopia to the Nile. The Blue Nile extends from the direction of the Addis Ababa in a northwestern direction toward the Nile. Then you got a river. You have the Bar El Ghazal River, which is near Uganda and northern Congo. Then you have the Bar El Arab and Jordan Rivers in northwest Upper Nile. You also got the White Nile, which flows east to unite at Lake No. These are the rivers beyond Ethiopia. Your ministers never taught you this. The, your white slave masters, your white colonializers have taught you nothing but white man lies and kept you down and out and destitute from all truth. So you, many of you right now, you have images of a white God in your house, in your homes. Some of you have images of white Jesus in your car. But you can't prove that in the Bible. Why? Because it's a lie. Those white images you all have are lies. Christian lies. White supremacist lies. Huh? Let's get some more. I said that the Israelites fled from the land of Israel into Africa. I'm going to say it again. The Israelites fled from Israel into Africa and were there for about a thousand years. Can I prove that statement? Let's go to the book of Luke. Go to the book of Luke, chapter 21. And I'm going to start at verse 20. Christ is speaking. And when you shall see Jerusalem come past with armies, meaning the Roman armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. What year was Christ prophesying? 70 AD. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. What mountains did we flee to when Rome came against us? The mountains of Africa. How do I know that the Israelites fled from Israel into Africa? Let's examine the book of Matthew chapter 2 and verse 13. Matthew chapter 2 and verse 13. It says, And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt. Where is Egypt? Africa. Where is Egypt? Africa. Why did the angel tell Joseph to take Mary and Christ and flee into Africa? Huh? Because the Israelites had sanctuaries there. And we could blend amongst the people very easily. Let's go back to Luke 21. And verse 20 again. Then let them which are in, the, in Judea flee to the mountains. And let them which are in the midst of it depart out. And let not them that are in the countries enter therein. 
For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are fulfilled may be fulfilled. Now, let's examine history. Okay? Let's examine history. I'm going to read something here. Bear with me. I'm going to go to this book entitled From Babylon to Timbuktu, page 84. Watch what it says. I'm reading from Babylon to Timbuktu, written by Rudolf R. Windsor on page 84. It says, in the year 65 BC, the Roman armies under General Pompey captured Jerusalem. In 70 AD, General Vespasian and his son Titus put an end to the Jewish state with great slaughter. During the period of the military governors of Palestine, many outrages and atrocities were committed against the residue of the people. During the period from Pompey to Julius, it has been estimated that over one million Jews fled into Africa. Wait a minute! What did it say? It has been estimated that over one million Jews fled into Africa, fleeing from Roman persecution and slavery. The slave markets were full of black Jewish slaves. Today is your day. Today is your day. What have I proven to you so far? The Jews are black, according to the Bible. The Jews, over one million Jews fled into Africa. We established tribes and mingled with other tribes and had children. That's why I say many of you in Cameroon are descended of the Israelites. You are of the stock and lineage of Israel, the real Israelites as am I, okay? Listen good to what I'm saying. You are not Africans. You are Israelites. The real Israelites. You've never heard this before. You've never understood that before until today. Today is your day. Now is your time. Rejoice. Stand up and praise the Almighty. Write down the scriptures that I gave you. Okay, so... The next thing, before we round it up, Ma uh, remember Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. This is what the angel said to Joseph. And she shall bring forth a son, and she shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. What does his people signify? A particular race of people. Jesus Christ came to save a particular race of people. What happened to that particular race of people? Over one million of them fled into Africa. They lost their identity. They began to be call, calling themselves Cameroons. They called themselves Nigerians. They called themselves Ghanaians. They called themselves Ashanti, Sierra Leone, so forth and so on. They called themselves Congo, Congolese. This is the history you've never been told. <clears throat> this is the history that should make you rejoice. Matthew 15, verse 24. It says, hold on, let me get it. It says, but he answered and said, this is Christ Jesus speaking, but he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So Christ followed the exact same message the angel gave Joseph. That Mary would bring forth a son and call his name Jesus. And his mission would be to save his people from their sins. Now we're in Matthew 15, 24, where Christ says, I'm not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. What makes us lost? When we were both enslaved and colonialized, we lost our identity. We lost our heritage. We lost our culture. Now we call ourselves under new African names. Cameroons, Sierra Leones, Ghanaians, the Congolese, Afro-Americans, Haitians, Jamaicans, Trinidadians. We have, our names have been changed. So what does that mean? That means you've never had the proper understanding of John 3.16. 
In John 3, 16, what Christ says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. It meant the world of the Israelites and whosoever of the world of the Israelites. That's what it means. It does not mean all races on the planet Earth. What is the proof? You've got to start up at verse 14. And as Moses was in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Who did Moses lift up the serpent in the wilderness to? The Israelites. They were getting bit by poisonous snakes. So Moses had to lift up a serpent of brass in the wilderness. And the scripture says, Whosoever and of all that looks upon the serpent of brass shall be healed. That's why Christ gave this, the correlation between the serpent of brass that Moses lifted up and himself being lifted up during the time of crucifixion. Okay? So you've never had the right understanding of John 3.16 either. You've never had the right understanding of anything the Bible says. All that you know is based upon white supremacy. All, all that you know is based upon white man and woman lies. Everything you know. For example, Christmas. Do you celebrate Christmas? Christmas is of the devil. God says don't learn Christmas. Jeremiah 10, 1 through 5. But what do many of our people do? We celebrate Christmas. That's of the devil. All right? You've never learned the Bible, but you're learning it now. You're learning today. We got to come out of those Christian white man lies. Come out, come out wherever you are. Come out, come out wherever you are. All right? I pray you all understand that thing. Let's get Acts 5 and 30. Acts chapter 5. It says, Acts chapter 5 verse 30 reads, The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom he slew and hanged on a tree. Remember, the cross was made from a tree. Verse 31. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sin. You see how it correlates? Acts 5.31 is saying the same thing as Matthew 15.24, Matthew 1.21, John 3.16. They're all saying that Christ only came for Israel, the world of the Israelites. You haven't figured that one out yet because when you teach or read the Bible, you believe and teach that the Bible contradicts itself. No, the Bible does not contradict itself. The white man contradicts the Bible. You, in your Christian lives, contradict the Bible. So now you're learning the great truth that many of you are Israelites of the seed of Abraham, the seed of Isaac, the seed of Jacob. You've never heard that truth before. Okay? Never, ever, ever. Now that we're giving it to you, everything's a joke. Well, why? Because of low self-esteem? You've never believed you could amount to anything. You've never believed that. So you giggle and laugh at everything. That's the broke man's prayer. That's the broke woman's prayer. Just laugh about it. Just laugh as if the truth won't stand. Oh, the truth's going to stand. And tear you up. So, brothers and sisters, I pray that you got something. And if you have questions, call in. All right. If you have questions, call. Hello. Yes. Yes, Bishop. I would like to remind our listeners here that they can call us on six seven six two five eight nine one seven and direct your questions straight to the bishop. Six seven six. Two five eight nine one seven. All right. If you didn't have the chance to call today, maybe next week you will call. Prepare yourselves and get set for next week and uh, listen carefully so that you may be able to ask some questions to to uh, Bishop Nathaniel. We will, Bishop will just be rounding up in two minutes because we have a fifteen minutes slot for this. Bishop, over. Yes. So let's go to the sister of Moses. Okay. Remember. Moses the prophet was raised in Africa. He was raised in the house of Pharaoh in Egypt. Originally, that was an all-black nation. 
okay? The Arabs you have in here today, those are not the original Egyptians. Those are not the original Africans. Those are transplants. They're descendants of the Ottoman Empire, okay? Let's go to the book of Exodus real quick. Exodus chapter 4. I'm going to read verse... Uh, six and seven. This is one of the miracles of that God showed Moses. And the Lord said further unto him, Put now thine hand into thy bosom. And he put his hand into his bosom, and when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. And he put thine hand, and he said, Put thine hand into thy bosom again. And he put his hand into his bosom again, plucked it out of his bosom, and behold, Turned again at this other flesh. This is proving to you that Moses' hand turned leprous as snow. Proving to you Moses could not have been a white man. Proving to you and I that Moses was, yes, a black man. Let's go to Moses' sister Miriam at Numbers 12 and 9. Numbers chapter 12, verse 9. I'll start at verse 10. This is when God got angry at Miriam, the sister of Moses. Numbers 12, verse 10. And the cloud departed from off the tabernacle, and behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow. And Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. And Aaron said unto Moses, Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not this sin upon us wherein we have done foolishly and wherein we have sinned. Let her not be as one dead. Let her not be as one dead. So Miriam looked dead when the brown pigmentation was taken from her when she became leprous, white as snow. Proving to you Moses, his brother Aaron, his sister Mary were black people. All the Israelites are black people. You've never heard this. You've never learned this. Many of you right now are thinking about your pastor. Your pastor's a liar. Your pastors can't prove nothing concerning the true ethnicity of the real Israelites. Your pastors have been teaching you lies. That's why it was the white man, it has been easy for the white man to colonialize us and enslave us because of these Christian lies. Lie, 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 lie. All you Christians have been teaching lies. You've been following lies all your lives. Now it's wake up time. Wake up to the truth that we are the seed of the Israelites. Wake up to the truth that Adam was a black man. Wake up to the truth that the prophet Job was a black prophet. Wake up to the truth that King Solomon of the nation of Israel was a black man. Wake up that the angels of God are black like coals. Wake up that Jesus Christ himself, the son of God, is a black God. Wake up. You must shake yourself from all Christian lies. I proved to you in Matthew 121, the angel told Joseph, him and Mary would have a son and call his name Jesus, and he shall save his people from their sins. Matthew 15, verse 24, when Jesus became an adult, he said, I'm only sent for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Wake up! We read Acts 5, verse 31, where it said, Christ is a prince and a savior to give repentance to the Israelites. And forgiveness of sins. So wake up! You've never understood John 3.16. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him. Should not perish but have everlasting life. Wake up! That's referring to the world of the Israelites. It stays in conjunction with Matthew 1.21. Matthew 15.24. Acts 5.31. It's all saying the same thing. But your Christian liars, you Christian liars, have taught us God is white. Jesus is white. The Jews are white. The angels are white. Now I challenge all of you. Prove it with scripture. 
prove your lies with scripture. If you can't prove it, then be silent and repent. Some of your churches will have to close down because you've been doing nothing but robbing the people of their tithes and offerings and teaching lie after lie after lie. Wake up! We are the seed of the Israelites of the nation of Israel. If you would like more information, please visit my website at www.israelunite.org. O-R-G. Israelunite.org. That's O-R-G. Please visit my website if you want more information. You've never heard this before. And what I'm giving you is the gospel, the good news, the good, good news. I hope every man and woman listening understands that. I know some of you might have questions, but you're so shocked. You really don't know what to say right now. And for the most part, that's a good thing. Just write the scriptures down as I gave them to you and meditate on them. Get a King James Version Bible. King James Version Bible. We also proved in Zephaniah 3 and 10, a remnant of Israel is beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. We also proved in Acts 13, 1, there were certain prophets and teachers that was called Niger, or Niger, which comes from the Niger River, that area. Wake up! You've been following Christian lies all your lives. Now it's time to wake up and be blessed. Wake up and be blessed by this truth. We are the seed of Abraham, the seed of Isaac, the seed of Jacob. We are the seed of the Israelites. Wake up! I can't stress it enough. Just as I had to wake up and shake all Christian lives, so must you and your families shake off all Christian lives if you want to be blessed by God. Wake up, brothers. Wake up, sisters. Wake up, my children. Wake up. We are the Israelites the Bible speaks of. We are the Israelites the Bible speaks of. Wake up. Any questions? Yes, Bishop. Um, we have just one question here. Uh, a text message that says that, um, can you give, Bishop, can you give us adequate proof with Bible verses on whether Adam or Eve were blacks? Yes. As we read in Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, it says about Adam, and the Lord God for man of the dust of the ground. The dust of the ground means the soil of the earth. The soil of the earth is not white. It's dark brown. The soil of the earth, which is the dust of the ground, is dark brown. So what was Adam? A black man. What was Eve that came from his side? A black woman. Read with understanding. Open your mind and see. Wake up. Wake up. Tear down all those white images of Jesus. Tear them down! Burn those white false images of God, Christ, Moses, and the Israelites. Tear them down. Burn them up. They are curse upon us. A curse upon us. I've given you the truth. That's all I can do. If you want lies, you can go back Sunday to your preachers. They'll be more than happy to teach you another lie. The white man is the devil, the Bible speaks. His biblical name is Esau, E-S-A-U, in the Holy Bible. Esau is the race that God hates. Read Romans 9, verse 13. Oh, you didn't know God hates? I've given you the truth, brothers and hello. sisters. Uh, hello, Bishop Netanyahu. All right, let's see if we can continue. I'm here. I'm here. Hello, hello. 
All right, Bishop, we just had a caller and then uh, something went wrong and the lines went off. Okay, we'll, we'll be hoping to, to receive this caller again. Please, you can call again, 676 258917, so that you can ask Bishop one question before we go. All right, well, we're looking forward to next week. I would like for somebody to call. Okay, here comes the caller on the line. Okay, Bishop, let me take this caller. Hello? Oh, okay, okay. All right. Uh, I can't hear him. Okay, Bishop, uh, he's asking a question that um, God is always portrayed as a white man. What, what's the reason for that and why all that? Can you hear me now, Bishop? Yes, sir. What was the question? Okay, um, uh, this guy called from Banja Street in Bamenda, and uh, he's asking a question. He says that um, he sees Jesus portrayed only as a white man, like God, too, portrayed as a white man. That what is the reason for all this, and who started it all? Okay. Here's the scripture. Job 9, verse 24. Mm -hmm. Go to the book of Job, chapter 9, verse 24. Mm -hmm. It says, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. Mm -hmm. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. Mm -hmm. Who are the judges the wicked covered their faces? God, Christ, the angels, the Israelites. Those are the judges of the earth. When the white man covered their faces with his face, he distorted history. He was able to colonialize Cameroon and enslave some of its inhabitants. Mm -hmm. That was the purpose behind it. Mm -hmm. These false images are a curse to our people. I hope you understand. Yes, we do good understand, Bishop. Yes. All right. Bishop, um, we, would like yes. to, we would like to end for right now, and uh, we're looking forward to having you again next week for another edition yes. of uh, this program. Because uh, we know okay. that uh, this is a new message that needs to get into the uh, heads of people, and uh, lots of people are interested. And uh, hopefully, we will be having many calls next week. Okay. So All we, praises. Yes, we thank you so much again for being with us, and uh, God bless you. We look forward to having you next week. Thank you. Well, Shalom, Israel. I'm Eldon Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates from all our YouTube channels. Shalom.